okay what's up um i already have a tutorial video for ableton on how to basically route audio through the input and output um of ableton it also goes into a little bit of like the sample rate and buffer sizes but for the most part the sample rate and buffer size of um these software applications and daws are good the way they are um, if you want to look into those some more you can see other videos but this is going to cover mostly like uh, the input and output settings for audio because that's really really important that you understand that we all understand here in this uh, electronic music scene how inputs and outputs are working and how they work in uh, correlation with your your uh, your software application. In this case, it's gonna be FL Studio. If you want to see it for Ableton, you have to search for audio settings for Ableton in my channel. I have a video that teaches you audio settings in Ableton. Okay, so here in FL Studio, you have a microphone track on five with the little compressor that might be a little loud, but should be fine there. Um, and a limiter is on that, cool. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to these options. There's a drop down right under the edit in the top left. You have the file, edit, channels, view, and options. Under the options tab, you're gonna go down to the MIDI settings. Or no, excuse me, you're gonna go to the audio settings. It's a long day. So you're gonna click on these audio settings here. Um, and within this, window that pops open you can switch between midi audio general file um this is where your samples come from debug stuff like that um but we're going to stay here in audio for this whole video and you want to make sure that you have core asio or core asio selected as the um sound driver running in the run, running in the background um i know it's tempting to go for your audio interface you if you choose your audio interface as the direct sound um it's not really going to work you want to go for the core asio you always want to have core asio chosen which is an, it's in a separate category here see all of these are like direct sound de devices um i have the primary sound driver i have the multi-output and all of these um you want to make sure you have the core asio in fl studio selected as your um basically as your audio that's that everything is running audio through um in fl studio you really want to focus on the inputs and outputs to come through the mixer i know it's kind of weird um but you see that there isn't any in these settings you don't have an option for input and output like in ableton it says in the audio settings it says audio input and it says audio output so you want to actually choose you know uh just watch that video if you want to learn a in ableton how to do audio settings but you want to choose the interface as your input and then your output whatever you want the output to be but in this one in these audio settings within fl studio you just want to ignore all of these and go straight to the core asio because you're going to do the input and output directly here in this mixer all right so everything's going to work through the mixer you're basically done with this now um with the audio settings just make sure that's core si core asio core asio and you're done with those audio settings you're going to come down to this mixer which if you don't know where it is it's up here in this top right okay so there are these buttons up here and if you hover over anything the name appears in the top left so under file and edit it says view mixer over here if you look over here in the screen it tells you what you're hovering over so that says uh you know like envelope whatever then kick clap and see how in the top left top left little window there screen it tells you what you're hovering over so the mixer is this thing in the top right you have all these things that you can toggle them on the screen so the playlist the uh, step sequencer um, the piano roll and then the navigation and then the last one on the left here is the mixer that you can toggle on and off so in this mixer you want to do your audio input is up here in the top right and audio output is down here in the bottom right um, okay so here this is where you're going to really do your inputs and outputs um, on individual tracks so basically what this means is like in this track 5 here 
on the mixer, I have the input set as my Mbox Pro channel one. And the Mbox Pro is my audio interface. If you have an audio interface, and that, another big thing is this won't even work if you don't have an audio interface. You have to have an audio interface and you have to have the driver for that audio interface installed on your computer. So um, you may have an audio interface that you may have got in like black market or somehow, like not from like a retail, um, like mine I got from my buddy at Perk's Coffee House. He owns the, he owns the shop and he just sold me his old interface. So I didn't get the driver. Like it came with the CD. And first of all, Max don't even use CDs anymore. But like, um, if I just plug this in from him, it wouldn't work on my computer. I have to install the driver. So make sure if you get an interface like that through that way, those channels, make sure you always uh, download the driver for your interface and install the driver on your computer. <clears throat> and then you're basically able to um, You'll, you'll see this appear as the input. So an in input, you now have all these, you're not gonna have all these Soundflower channels. Um, I downloaded Soundflower to route audio into OBS. Um, you should only have your audio interface. So ignore ignore all these audio, all these Soundflower things and just look at these Mbox Pro ones down here. So Mbox Pro channel zero, channel one, channel two, channel three, and my Mbox Pro has eight channels. But it starts on channel zero, so it goes zero to seven. And then <clears throat> like one is really zero, two is really one, three is really two, and I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Um, so for example, my microphone's plugged into two on the interface, so it's one in here, and it's coming through. If I switched it to something else, it's not gonna work anymore. So if I put it on, say, channel five, it's gonna cut out, you're not gonna There, all right. So now we're back with audio. Um, so you wanna have your audio input up here in the top right. And um, the output has none, cause you're really, you're not sending any of that information, um, you know, on this particular track anywhere. You wanna send the information on this track to the master track. And then from the master track, you send the information out to the speakers or to your headphones or wherever. Um, so make sure that on the bottom here on this mixer, you have a little down arrow. Make sure that down arrow is selected and make sure the up arrow is over here on the master. So that means this information from this track is going down through this track and up into this master track. And as you can see, both tracks are getting volume signal. So they're working. All right. Um, and you can do that for any track. You could come into track eight and say you have a guitar that's plugged into your interface on channel three. Um, you can come into you can come into track six to keep it organized right next to it, and you can choose Mbox Pro Channel Three, and now that guitar will come in on uh, on track six, and then it'll go to the master as well. So you'll have both the audio, you'll have both the you'll have both the microphone vocal track and the guitar track going through to the master track, which is picking up everything that's being sent to it, and then say on track seven. You have a piano or like a bass guitar. You can you can bring that into Mbox Pro Channel Four, all right, and make sure you plug it into Channel Four on the Mbox Pro or the corresponding channel. Um, and then now the bass guitar is on track six. The guitar is on track f uh, the bass guitar is on track seven. The guitar is on track six, and the vocal microphone tracks on track five. And then all of those all of those are now going through to the master all at once. So you can record everything in one take. Um, you can go back and do multiple takes. You can split it up, and then this way you're able to really edit like the individual parts. Like if if the bass guitar is too loud it doesn't matter because it's on its own track now and you can turn that volume down for the for the or the bass guitar on track seven you can turn the volume down for the bass guitar you can add effects to only the bass guitar you can equalize the bass guitar you can low, have a little reverb on the bass guitar and you can really mix and master um, or this is the mixing phase mostly you, you can really mix in the bass guitar into the entire track on as a whole same with the guitar if the guitar is too if it's too piercing in the high frequency range, you can equalize that by just uh, you know setting an equalizer. So you find parametric EQ, and then you'd want to cover, take out some of the higher frequencies like that of the uh, electric guitar, and then cut out lower frequencies, whatever you want to do to make it um, 
fit the mix like the overall mix of the song for example on my vocal track if i do that equalizer to it um see you're gonna hear the voice sweep as i talk so you're equalizing i'm basically equalizing my voice to fit like whatever song i'm working in right now it doesn't matter because it doesn't have any music but you see what i mean so uh that's that those are all inputs so you get that through these inputs over here and that goes to the master now your master is where your output is um so make sure your master doesn't have an input because if you have an input on the master it's gonna it's gonna double up you're gonna have you're gonna have the input on track five coming in and then you're gonna have say like the input on the master and it's gonna double up the same the same input and you don't want that so have all the inputs on these individual tracks split up by, by track and by instrument and then have um, the master without any input but you want an output on the master okay and this is where you have to choose your particular setup uh, if if you're listening to your speakers through your computer through your computer speakers all right you'd want to choose the output as built-in output okay if you just want if you just want the sound to come out of your computer speakers um, out of straight out of your laptop or through uh, the headphone jack little um, auxiliary port in your computer you can you can do it that way through output being uh, built-in output and again ignore all these sound flowers you won't have the sound flower on yours um, okay that's that's what you do however if you have an audio interface and your audio interface is plugged into your computer and you want your speakers to and your speakers are plugged into the audio interface not plugged into your computer directly but plugged into the audio interface through the audio interface output you want to choose your audio interface as the output which is this mbox thing okay so the audio interface has both inputs and outputs on it um, the inputs are your instruments going into the audio interface and then into the pr into your fl studio the outputs are coming from fl studio into your audio interface and then out to your speakers or out to your headphones or wherever and you can do a lot with this so you can on the back of my inbox pro i have multiple outputs so they're all right here output one is channel zero and one output two is channel two and three four and five and six and seven okay so you can output that way um, from the master track to your audio interface but if you do that it won't play through your laptop speakers and it won't come through your auxiliary port because the outputs being routed to the interface and then to your speakers okay so you have to choose one or the other and if you're at a gig somewhere and like they have an audio interface that the speakers are can the speakers are come our speakers are connected to the audio interface at some gig or like a, a mixer and your output on your master track i don't know why the hell you'd have fl studio at a live gig but you know if you do um it's more for ableton but if if fl studio if your output is set to uh built-in output but their you but their speakers are connected to an, a mixer you know and then you connect to the mixer it's not going to work unless they have an aux cord that comes from the mixer to your computer then it will work but um you just have to really understand all the possibilities that can happen and then think like oh this now makes sense what's really going on here and um yeah so in my case my speakers here are plugged into an audio interface so i want my output to be the audio interface but as you see mine's a multi-output device which is combining uh my audio interface and my built-in output and this sound flower crap which don't worry about that this is for video editing um, and video routing so i'm routing my audio into a video editing software and i'm routing my audio into my audio interface and i'm routing my audio into the built-in things okay so that's a multi-output device if you make a multi-output device you're able to send the output to multiple output sources so in in my case everything here all of these are now combined into one output which is called the multi-output which is like a surefire always going to work way if i plug my interface in it works if i don't have my interface plugged in it still works through the, the speakers on the computer and uh, it also sends information into video editing software and if you want to know how to make if you want to learn how to make this audio output device you can watch a video on that i have um 
a video on making a multi output device. It's uh, it's part of a longer video, and I could make like a one specific uh, video for multi output devices because I think they're really useful, especially for this this kind of thing for audio, um, and for production and for live gigs. So uh, yeah, so input is up here. So as a recap, we're gonna go over everything real quick. The Audio settings, make sure you have Core a ASIO chosen as your audio settings here, just as the underlying, like I guess, driver for audio. And all of your audio inputs and outputs you're gonna do through the mixer on individual tracks. So this is the way FL is just set up. I think Ableton does it a lot quicker and to the point, but um, all the inputs you put on individual tracks in the mixer using this input selector here and the channel on your audio interface and then those tracks go to the master track where you don't have an input, but you're gonna have an output. And your output can be the interface, your, out your output could be the built-in speakers, or it could be a combination like what I have as the multi-output device. So yeah, it's kind of a long video, but if you have any questions about this, you can drop a comment or message me. I also have a website at epsilon144.com uh, that's, that's epsilon144.com. I have contact information on there, as well as all my tutorial videos, music, and all that. So, yeah. Thank you for watching this. I hope it helped. And um, I hope you have a wonderful day and everything. Have fun producing music. Later.